Hi team, I wanted to come to you today and talk to you about Training Peaks and give you a bit of an outline of the behind the scenes of Training Peaks and what I look at in regards to your sessions and data uh, to help you understand a little bit on what that all means as well because I've had a few questions. So as part of uh, our education for you, um, this is an overview of that. If you have sort of seen something like this before good chance to have a refresher because i have spoken about this in the past but um there's never anything wrong with having a refresher all right so this is what you see generally as an athlete that's your calendar that's where your sessions come in um you'll see your planned sessions your sessions that are actually being completed and you can click on a particular session and look at the data yourself and that's what a lot of you will do you'll go in have a look at your session, what that was, what did you do in the intervals, how much power, what was your speed, etc. So that's what you would generally see um, and look at as an athlete. Now, what I'm going to what I'm going to go in a little bit more depth is is the performance management chart. So more overall of what is happening with your fitness, not just a particular session. So it's easy to look at a particular session. Did I do well? Did I not? How hard did I go? But what we're looking at is trend over time. And this is where that word consistency comes into play. So your consistency over time with the workload that's been given um, and what effect is, having, is that having on your fitness? So to do that, a um, couple of things I'll just quickly show before we go to the, the chart is this on the side will just show you uh, at any given time where you are at in your week. Now it is a week from Monday to Sunday, not everyone's weeks look like that, particularly for our shift workers. So you can see what overall, um, how much distance, what your training stress is for the week, and I'll go through that, uh, how much totals, etc. But one thing I wanna stress here is a lot, I get comments from athletes saying, oh, I did, you know, X amount of kilometers for the week. That to me is often irrelevant. I don't program and say, okay, you're going to do 100 kilometers this week, next week you're going to do 120, and the next week you're going to do 130, and that's your increase in training. Um, it's a lot more detailed in regards to that. So your training stress can come from duration, but also intensity. Okay, so often as intensity increases, duration may decrease at the same time and then they come back up together. So just keep that in mind when you are looking at your data and information. So dashboard, this is where we can see some trends over time. Now this is where I get the questions. So performance management chart or PMC, okay? Lots of dots, colors, lines that um, for some mean absolutely nothing but that's where I'm here to explain all right so if we jump in this one now if I looked at that look and had a look at an athlete and wanted to know what, where they were at in their training I could see pretty clearly um, where they were peaking where they had some time off or recovering um, how much fatigue they were holding, how fit they were. So here you can see these peaks is where an athlete was peaking. Um, and this is me, so I know what those particular events were. So they, you know, most people are peaking for a particular event. Um, and that's what each of those areas are coming through to today. So you can actually see there that even in COVID times, I'm uh, at a higher fitness level than what I was previously. But in saying that, that was coming off also um, a you know, 18 months of having a child as well. So it started pretty low. So it is a little bit skewed as well. Okay, so what did the dots mean? Each individual dot is a individual session so if you actually clicked on a dot it would take you to a particular session in time so I could click on there look at that session what was it what did it do to create that much stress so a red dot is TSS which is training stress score now that's calculated on how hard so the intensity 
and the duration. Okay, so you can also see there which comes up, bring it back up, intensity factor. Okay, intensity factor of one essentially means for an hour you completed the session or workout at your threshold. So the intensity factor is based on your threshold, which is why it's important that we do uh, update our training zones and have those set in there. So if um, you know someone who uses training peaks and they don't have training zones, this data is irrelevant because it's not accurate um, at all. So regular updates of your training zones to make sure that that is that your data is remaining accurate. Okay, so training stress score. So a particular session creates a training stress on the body. Then what starts to happen, so the map plots all those out. So you can see all those dots. If there's ones down the bottom, that means there was nothing on those particular days. Um, so what I'd like to see with an athlete is consistently plenty of dots going on, okay? Because that means that the consistency is there, that there's something happening um, majority of the time, uh, regardless of what that that may be right so we then go to the fatigue that that particular session starts to induce so we train to create a stress response which creates fatigue all right so that then starts to plot those out so we can see these pink lines that start to plot out the fatigue that starts to come from the sessions. Now, training peaks do this, they call it uh, acute training load. So over a seven day period, so historic seven day period, it maps out a acute training load for that period, plots it out, and then that starts to create some information to show over a period of time what that fatigue is, is happening. And so if your training increases, the fatigue essentially increases with it. Then we go to the fitness. So fatigue starts to increase as you train, but obviously that goes along with it is the fitness. So fitness is this blue line, and that's one that I like to look at. So the blue and yellow are the two ones that we look at a lot, uh, as well as obviously the, the red dots. So the fitness or chronic training load. Okay, so truck sorry, chronic, meaning over a longer period of time. And for training peaks, they calculated over, I'm pretty sure it was like 42 day period. So historic 42 day period, what accumulative effect is your training having? Okay, so if you've been consistent over the previous um, days and weeks and months, your blue line should start to come up. And that's what we would see, okay? And how quickly that line goes up depends on how quick a ramp you're doing in your training. So, you know, we don't want to see that shooting right for the stars because that's when there can be issues in regards to overtraining or injuries, etc. So we want a nice steady climb of that blue line. So your fitness or chronic training load. Then what layers on? So if you've got fatigue and you've got fitness going up you then have a training stress balance so this yellow line which is our form so this yellow line tells us how much fatigue is laid in with your fitness okay so the yellow line going down so if I look here the yellow line going down it's got a negative 33 that actually means I'm pretty fatigued all right there's something happened there that that was creating um, a pretty high fatigue up here you can see the yellow lines way up to the sky uh, and that is a form or tsb of 30 that means i'm actually really fresh and you can see that because that um, must have been a race here yes i did a race in sydney somewhere no i can't remember what was on there um that my fitness started to drop and my form so my freshness 
increased at the same time, which is what you would see. Um, so like when you'd see in a taper of a race, you would you want to see that form, so your freshness increase, but trying to minimize the drop off your, of your fitness. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And if I have a look at when um, Geelong, uh, Geelong, this was Sydney here. Yes, this was Sydney here. So here I was peaking for my race. I freshened up. So um, you can see here of carrying fatigue, I started to go into taper, freshened right up, but you can see that line there, it didn't drop off too much, right? So we're just trying to maintain our fitness there. We've peaked, we can't do any more in those last few weeks leading in. We're just trying to maintain, but we're trying to freshen up, okay? So we freshen up, this yellow line comes up, and then we race, bang and then we recover, okay? And you're gonna expect your fitness to decrease because you really need to recover from there. And as you can see here, my form, my training stress balance, so how fresh I am, is pretty high because I'm, my training load went down quite heavily straight after a race as you recover, and I like really decent recoveries after a race. Here's uh, another one. So another race as you come in, freshen up, race at your peak. So here's that peak there. And then we recover and we freshen up again. Okay, so that's what that looks like there. So if you're looking at, at peaking at a particular time, peak fitness doesn't necessarily mean that you're peak ready for a race. So if I raced here, all right, so if I raced a couple of weeks before, didn't freshen up, I'm holding a lot of fatigue, well actually not a lot there, but I'm here holding still a reasonable amount of fatigue, I wouldn't actually be um, fresh and ready for my race. So there's a, that's um, where it shows the importance of a taper that, that comes into play. So essentially your fitness, minus your form, so your fitness, your chronic training load, minus your form, which is your fatigue, oh sorry, minus your fatigue equals your form, all right? So if we have a look at where I am today, what we want to see is our line going up gradually and it's never gonna be a straight line. I talk to people about our training being like um, going upstairs. So you might go up five stairs, then you come to a landing, you have a little bit of a, a break and then you go up the next five stairs or 10 stairs, okay? So you're going sort of up, you, you wanna hold that there, freshen up, and then you wanna go up again. If you kept going up and up and up and up without any rest or break or freshen up or recovery, whatever you wanna call it, well then there's gonna be a point, the tipping point when you're uh, fatigue is going to be more than your body can hold all right and you start you'll start to see a plateau in your training now so another thing you'll notice is this is uh, now going to start to um, lengthen in based on the time that we're in at the moment so in COVID we're now not going to be racing really till the end of the year um, so that's going to start to um, just even out a little bit more um, while I'm still, you know, while we're still trying to manage our training loads, still want to improve and push forward, but we don't want to be, you know, necessarily peaking for a race um, when there are no races. But how we're mitigating that is actually bringing in some challenges. So we'll look at uh, bringing in some challenges around that October, November time so that you can have something to work towards, have something that your fitness can peak up to, you can recover from, because we can't be continuing to uh, increase you know, year round without some recovery and decent recovery. So peaking up, challenge, hit the challenge, and have some good recovery. So we will then start to see these lumps happening even though there won't be any races there. So we might have a challenge here in October, we'll do a little bit of freshen up and recovery, um, won't be so heavily um, freshened up, 
and then go again. So we want to then hit another challenge in November and then um, another challenge in December. So that's where those challenges, events come into play. So they're not only there just to keep you motivated and interested, but it actually helps with your performance as we go through the season. So hopefully that has helped clarify a little bit in regards to our um, data from Training Peaks. But if it does bring out more questions, feel free to ask away and I will happily share um, further information from there. Thanks all.